Do y'all feel okay with the setup? Yeah? Let's go piece by piece, step by step, and figure out this thing. What are you going to do first, do you think? Okay, we can pull the two pi out. I like that idea. Go from zero to one. In fact, you know what? I think the formula in some books actually gives a two pi in front of it, which is appropriate. It's just fine. I like to show it here because you see where the part is. Uh, but you can always pull that two pi out. It's a constant. It's being multiplied. No problem. What now? X to the cube, and I would also do substitution. Well, before we even look at that. I do square your 3x squared. What am I going to get when I square the 3x squared? Good. Then you do substitution. Cool. Now we look at it as an integral because that's what it is. We say, how in the world can we do this integral? We've mastered that stuff already. What type of problem is this for you? An easy one, because it's really smacking in the face, right? It's got to, it's got to work out. It's something we've done in this class, or we can't do it. There's no more um, integration techniques for first semester calculus. You have them. So you either have to manipulate it somehow, which I've shown you a couple ways now, especially with the length of the curve. Oh my gosh, those are pretty heavy duty. Or use some sort of a substitution. Which, do you see the substitution is in fact going to work here? Mm -hmm. We have an x to the fourth and an x to the, it's going to work. It's going to work just fine. So let's use our substitution. What is your u for this? One plus nine x to the fourth. Yeah, you pick the whole thing inside that square root. If that's the case, du equals 36 x to the third dx, and we have du over 36 x to the third equals <coughs> dx. What else might you want to do? Do you guys like changing bounds? I like changing bounds too. It makes it easier later on. So let's take our x equals 1 and our x equals 0. Let's change those bounds. If x equals 1 and u is 1 plus 9x to the fourth, how much are you going to be? Perfect. Not too bad. If x equals 0, how much are you going to be? Not bad either. Hey, we're about ready to go on this thing. We've got our 2 pi. We're not going from 0 to 1 anymore. Those were in terms of x. Those are our bounds in terms of x. We want to change to u, so let's change our bounds as well. We're going to go not from 0 to 1, but from 1 to 10. Do I still have an x cubed? Do I still have a square root? What's inside the square root? Yes, I am. du over 36x to the third. That's where we make our substitution dx equals du over 36x to the third. Tell me some cool things that happened here, folks. What's happening? That's what we had to have happen, right? If, if we couldn't get rid of those x cubes, basically stuck. So done and done. What else are you going to do? Don't forget about the 36. That's important. So if we lose that, yeah, that, well, the 36, and it's going to be 136, yes. But don't forget about it. So we pull out the 136. You have a 2 over 36. What you're going to have up front is pi over 18. You okay on the pi over 18? Mm -hmm. So combining those two fractions, still an integral, 0 to 1. Uh, zero. 2 to 1, 1 to 10. 10. Oh, okay, so I was actually testing you. Good job. Uh, <laughs> You'll never know. 1 to 10. What's on the inside of our integral? One half. Good, okay, so we got to make sure it fits our integration table. And we're in du, which is great for us. So pi over 18. U to the u to the over or yeah. So pi over 18 times u to 3 halves over 3 halves. Of course we're going to make that fraction look better. We're going to make this, I'll do it in two steps. Pi over 18, 2u to the 3 halves over 3, just fine. We can simplify the 2 with the 18. We'll end up getting 
pi over 27, u to the 3 halves, and we'll be going from 1 to 10, as our integral said we would. Can you please explain to me why I am not plugging this back into here before I'm evaluating? I did change bounds. If I hadn't changed bounds, that is what I would be doing right now. You've got to take care of this operation somewhere. It's either before you do the integral or after, but somewhere it's going to happen. By show of hands, how many people feel okay with the calculus? Basically done with the calculus. Now just evaluate. We're going to take 10 to the 3 halves minus 1 to the 3 halves. Ten to the three halves is going to be ten root ten. Minus one. There's a variety of ways you can write that. You can write that ten pi root ten over twenty seven minus pi over twenty seven. For right now, can you can you just verify that this is okay and leave it like that for me? Do you feel okay with leaving it like that? It's, it's just as valid. It's as simple as we can make the radical, 10 root 10 minus 1. You can't take anything away from that. Uh, what you could do is just distribute in that pi over 27, and that's about as good as you could get. You get 10 pi root 10 minus pi all over 27. So the other way would be 10. For some reason, this looks prettier than that to me. So either way. Yes, no? Feel okay with it? Would you like to try one more? You guys alive today? Not too bad, though, is it? Not too bad. Not too bad, at least. The integrals have to work out, which is nice. Are there any more uh, questions on the explanation before I erase it? Okay, one more. Let's do the same thing. Find the surface area of revolution of... y equals x squared between x equals 1 and x equals 2 around the y-axis. Some on the right hand side, my, my right hand side, tell me what's wrong. What's wrong right now? It's in terms of x. And what do we need it to be in terms of? For surface area of revolution, that's exactly correct. So right now we have some problems up here. We have in terms of x, we have O, x, and x, and y. Those things don't match up. So you're going to have to do a little translation. Notice that area between two curves. It's whatever axis you're relating it to, that's what your variables have to be in. Same thing with disk and washer. Same thing with surface area revolution. The only one that's not like that, again, is cylindrical shells. So be careful on this. This is not set up for the, around the y-axis. How do we set it up for around the y-axis? Solve for x, put it in terms of y, that's the same, the same thing, okay? So the first step, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to deal with these before I get too crazy on this stuff. How can I change x's into y's? Say what? Why square them? Okay, great. So square them because when I plug them into my function, that's what I'm going to get. Notice it says y equals x squared. It's giving you x's. Just plug them in. If x equals 1, then y equals 4. And if x equals 2, then y equals 4. Perfect. 
Now we have bounds in terms of y. Still okay? Yeah. Alright, let's continue. How do we get uh, in terms of y? If we do square root, we have y equals x squared, take a square root of both sides with a plus and minus, and you get x equals the square root of y plus and minus. Don't forget. Well, explain to me why I can forget the minus well, here. For surface area, you have a negative surface area. Not quite that. That's where you're talking about where the functions and the things are carrying that. Okay. Hmm. Well, firstly, because firstly is this. If I'm revolving x squared right, around the y-axis, I only need half of it. So if I'm revolving a whole You realize that's my picture, right? I'm taking this thing and spinning it this way. Won't half of it make the same shape as the whole thing? I'm like, plus, think about my, yeah. Think about my bounds, my original bounds. I'm talking between x equals 1 and 2. That doesn't have this part of it. That's just this part of it, not this over here. So it's, it's saying, yes, this would be mathematically correct. However, it's out of the bounds of my integration. It's my functions I need to define right there for this integral, so I don't need this half. I don't need the negative part of that. Did you understand that logic? Okay. So we don't need that just to answer a question you might not have even had. But <laughs> there it is. Are we set up? We're going around the y-axis. It's now in terms of y. That's great. We have our bounds in terms of y. We should be about ready to set up our integral. Just tell me one more thing we got to do before we. Get to our integral. Let's take the derivative. <coughs> what is my derivative? Perfect. Yeah, exactly right. <coughs> Excuse me. So, since we're looking for surface area revolution, we know it's around the y-axis. Let's put everything in terms of y. It goes from 1 to where? Good, because we're going around the y. It has to be in terms of y. 2 pi has got to be there. What's the next thing I'm going to write instead of the 2 pi? Oh, next to the 2 pi. Say what? Square root of y. Square root of y, because it's in terms of y. It says take the function in terms of y. Before you take, before you take the derivative, this would be like g of y. This would be like g prime of y function itself, then we go ahead and we multiply by what? Square root of 1 plus 1 over 2 root y. 1 over 2 root y. Okay. This thing, right? Don't forget to square it. Man, I think it's nasty if you forget to square it. It's wrong and it's nasty. That's the worst kind of wrong to be. <laughs> Show of hands, some people feel alright with getting that far. <coughs> yeah. You can make something nasty and it's fine if it's right, but getting something wrong and being nasty and working on it? Oh man. You don't want to do that, do you? No. no you want to do that. At least I hope not. Well, let's work on this thing. It's going to take a lot of algebra, but not a lot of calculus, honestly. A lot of algebra. Let's pull the 2 pi out. Let's go from 1 to 4. Let's have a square root of y. Let's have the 1 plus square that thing. What do you get? Um, 